Tonight, for the second time in just over a year, the House delivering Donald Trump a historic rebuke, now making him the first president ever to be impeached twice. The president of the United States incited this insurrection, this armed rebellion against our common country. He must go. He is a clear and present danger to the nation that we all love. A single article of impeachment accusing the president of incitement of insurrection in his remarks before last week's riots began. Donald Trump is a living, breathing, impeachable offense. It is what it is. It wasn't another country that attacked us, but our own president. All 222 House Democrats voting in favor of impeachment. And unlike the first impeachment of President Trump, where no House Republicans supported it, this time 10 broke ranks, including Jamie Herrera Butler. My vote to impeach our sitting president is not a fear-based decision. I am not choosing a side. I'm choosing truth. It's the only way to defeat fear. The top House Republican voting against impeachment. A vote to impeach would further divide this nation. But also leveling this stinging shot. The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. He should have immediately denounced the mob when he saw what was unfolding. In the White House, officials say President Trump was monitoring the debate, now banned by Twitter and Facebook. He put out this video response. Mob violence goes against everything I believe in and everything our movement stands for. No true supporter of mine could ever endorse political violence. Now I am asking everyone who has ever believed in our agenda to be thinking of ways to ease tensions, calm tempers. At the Capitol, the debate at times became heated. Some of my colleagues, some of which may well be co-conspirators, some have cited the metaphor that the president lit the flame. Well, they lit actual flames, actual fires, and we Time them out. Time There will be order in the House. Most Republicans blasting the Democrats' case. The fact that IEDs were constructed in place. How does the president incite an attack that was pre-planned and already underway before his speech concluded? It's an obsession, an obsession that is now broadened. Not just about impeachment anymore, it's about canceling, as I've said, canceling the president and anyone that disagrees with them. All of it coming after Vice President Pence rejected Democrats' ultimatum to invoke the 25th Amendment that Pence said was, quote, not a means of punishment. Tonight, Democrats urging a Senate conviction, they say in part to keep President Trump from holding office again. He must not remain in power one moment longer. This threat must be extinguished immediately. This president must be impeached and convicted, and he must be prevented from ever attempting to seize power again. And tonight, Mitch McConnell says there is no chance the Senate could hold an impeachment trial before President Trump leaves office. And he says he is still undecided whether he will vote to convict, insisting he'll, quote, listen to the legal arguments. Lesser. All right, Peter Alexander tonight, thanks. And all attention now turns to the Senate trial. Casey Hunt is on Capitol Hill. Casey, Democrats spent through impeachment hoping to start that trial soon, but it looks like they could have to wait a while. Lester, that's right. Mitch McConnell tonight making clear the first weeks of the Biden administration are still going to be all about Donald Trump as the Senate holds their impeachment trial. Democrats would likely need 17 Republicans to vote with them, and that will be an uphill climb. But if McConnell decides he'll vote to convict, that could change everything. Lester. All right, Casey, thank you. I want to bring in our political director and moderator of Meet the Press, Chuck Todd, and presidential historian Michael Beschloss. Chuck, first to you, where do you see the Republican Party going from here, especially after some voted to impeach? Well, look, it is at a real crossroads. This is a very divided party, particularly the leadership of the party is in one place. They would like to get rid of the virus that is Donald Trump. Whether that's Mitch McConnell, Liz Cheney, you even had some people who, while they didn't vote for impeachment, um, would are hoping that the result is that he is somehow uh, excommunicated from the party and impeachment is in a bad way to do it. But here's the rub, Lester. The problem is, while the leadership's in one place, the grassroots of the party is still a Trump party. All right, Michael, this is a historic second impeachment of a president. How will history books describe this moment? 
They will say that Donald Trump owns two, one half of all the presidential impeachments in history. They will say that today was the most bipartisan impeachment in modern history. And also, this guy can get convicted. That's a real possibility. If that happens, the founders of our country always intended that a Senate trial that convicted was not just to remove a president from office, but also to say to future Americans, this is the kind of person who should never be president. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.